The Necrophiliac Brothers are the names by which the brothers Ibrahim and Pedro Enrique de Oliveira became known in Brazil during the 1990s, due to a series of murders committed over several years, which included having sex with the bodies of their victims. The first crimes date back to 1991, when two victims were strangled with wires in Rio Grandina, in the Rio de Janeiro municipality of Nova Friburgo. Experts who analyzed the bodies identified signs of necrophilia. Part of these crimes took place in the region of the Trace Pico State Park. In 1995, a new wave of crimes hit Nova Friburgo. After four months of searching, Ibrahim de Oliveira was killed by the police at the end of that year, in Rio Grandina, a district of Consul Jairo Paulino, located 20 kilometers from Nova Friburgo. Pedro Enrique remains imprisoned in Marica prison. The police hunt began on February 27, 1995, when the couple Joao Carlos Maria de Rocha, 30, and Elisite Ferreira Lima, 39, were attacked while bathing in a waterfall in Janela das Andorinhas, in rural Nova Friburgo, and came to an end on December 16 of that year, when Ibrahim was shot dead by a captain from the Special Police Operations Battalion, BOP. Because of their practice of having sex with the bodies of their victims, they came to be known as the Necrophilic Brothers. Necrophilia is defined as sexual arousal resulting from the sight of or contact with a corpse. For several nights, I lay awake, unable to sleep. I would lean out of the window, pondering what needed to be done to capture those two. We couldn't see any hope on the horizon. Only despair, says Novis, who at the time commanded the 11th Military Police Battalion in Nova Friburgo, in Rio's mountainous region. Descendants of Braz and Maria Luisa Sors de Oliveira, a farming couple, Ibrahim and Enrique spent their first years of life in the countryside of the Rio de Janeiro mountains. They had two other siblings, Jailton, aged 17, and Marcia, the youngest, aged 16. None of the four received formal education to learn to read or write, the father suffered from alcoholism and, when he was under the influence of alcohol, he would violently assault his children, says Paolo Storiani, a former boat captain. On other occasions, he would throw the boys out of the house and force them to spend the night in the woods. The compassionate mother would throw food out of the window. The first murders took place in 1991, Eliana Macedo Xavier, 21, was the victim on February 15, while Norma Claudia de Araujo, 11, was murdered on September 11. Both were strangled with wire in Rio Grandina, Nova Friburgo. Experts who examined the bodies identified evidence of necrophilia. In his statement to the police, the younger brother, Ibrahim, then 16, confessed to being the perpetrator of Norma's murder, but denied Enrique's involvement. He was arrested and sent to the Padre Severino Institute, located on Ilha do Governador, in the north of Rio de Janeiro, where he remained until he turned 18. The Padre Severino Institute, intended for the provisional internment of young offenders, was established in 1954 and closed in 2012. They say that during his time in detention, Ibrahim suffered sexual abuse and was a victim of mistreatment. When he was finally released, he left in a worse state than when he entered, Novi's laments. In 1995, a new wave of crimes hit Nova Friburgo. The first occurred on February 27, a carnival Monday, Joao Carlos was brutally stoned to death, while his wife, although injured, managed to escape by throwing herself off a ravine. At the hospital, Elazit's description of her husband's murderers fit perfectly with that of the necrophiliac brothers. 
Outraged, some local residents set fire to the Oliveira family's humble home. Fearing a lynching, the father, mother and youngest children fled the town and, according to reports, sought refuge in Itaburai, some 84 kilometers away. On April 1, Ibrahim and Enrique added another victim to their list, this time their own aunt, Vera Lucia Damaseno, 35, who was stabbed to death in Rio Grandina. Between one murder and the next, the two brothers would sneak into the dense forest, making it practically impossible to track them down. The woods were extremely dense and closed in. Just three meters in and you couldn't see anything else, says Storiano. In their escape, the brothers entered rural properties and farms in search of food, looting clothes from the clotheslines of houses. They followed rivers and streams to avoid leaving traces and, at nightfall, sought refuge in caves, caverns, or improvised campsites in the dense vegetation. They even fed on raw animals and avoided cooking so as not to produce smoke. On May 17, 56-year-old Odite de Carvalho Silva became a victim, suffering fatal blows from a sickle, also in Rio Grandina. Rio's Secretary of Public Security, Reserve General Nilton Cerqueira, at the behest of the then governor of the state, Marcelo Alencar, decided to call in Bope to help the local authorities capture the killers. Due to the authorities' delay in arresting Ibrahim and Enrique, the majority of the region's inhabitants, mainly peasants and farmers, opted to swap their hoes for rifles. Women and children avoided going out at night. When they had to, they went in groups, armed with revolvers and machetes. Many families chose to abandon their homes and move to neighboring municipalities. For safety reasons, some residents chose to spend the night in front of the police station. Panic spread throughout the town. People started reporting that they had seen Ibrahim in multiple places at the same time, Storiano recalls. 26 years after the events, Novi's points to two reasons for the delay in capturing the necrophiliac brothers, the vast expanse of the area, especially the village of Janela das Andorinhas, in rural Nova Friburgo, which covers around 120,000 square meters of Atlantic forest, and the lack of preparation of the troops. We were trained to fight bandits in slums, not in the forest. We received no training in rural guerrilla warfare, he complains. The situation only began to change after Novi started working with foresters and farm dogs. To throw off the police dogs, Ibrahim and Enrique would spread the victims' blood over their bodies, explains the former PM commander. On July 27, another murder took place in the Banqueti district of BOM Jardim, this time of 67-year-old Iria Marais Ornelas, who was hanged with her own skirt in her own kitchen. Experts from the Medical Legal Institute confirmed the occurrence of post-mortem sexual violence in all the crimes. Bope's operation was divided into four phases, with the first being carried out by 12 men and the last mobilizing the entire battalion. Paolo Storiano, Deputy Commander of the Third Phase, reports that he spent around a month and a half in the hills of Rio de Janeiro. Among the various actions carried out, Boat mapped all the trails in the area, conducted interviews with relatives of the necrophiliac brothers, and, under the supervision of a military police psychologist, drew up a profile of Ibrahim and Enrique. We knew that sooner or later we would catch them. It was only a matter of time, Storiano recalls. The next step, he explained, involved setting up fixed and mobile patrols on the region's trails. The fixed patrols consisted of pairs of agents who camouflaged themselves in the middle of the vegetation, maintaining almost complete silence, and worked 32-hour shifts. The mobile patrols, on the other hand, were made up of groups of four members, including woodsmen and sniffer dogs, 
who roamed the trails in the area. Another strategy adopted by BOPE was to change the appearance of its agents, replacing their uniforms with civilian clothes and swapping their cars for unmarked vehicles. In September, 18-year-old Marcia Cristina de Mello narrowly escaped being included in the crime statistics of the Necrophiliac Brothers. At the time of the attack, Marcia was at home with her mother, Raquel, and her sister, Andrea, when Ibrahim tried to break into the family home. Using her father's .38 caliber revolver, Joaquin Martins de Mello, Marcia fired at the door scaring the intruder away. The tireless search came to an end on December 16, 1995. At the time, according to Novi's calculations, approximately 700 men were involved in the operation, 300 from the military police, 300 from BOPE and 100 volunteers. On that Saturday, 46-year-old farmer Cesar Araujo Pinto spotted a brame in a village known as Sitio do Coronel, on Fazenda do Barro Branco, and immediately informed the police. He was paid 10 Brazilian reals a day as a bushranger by the Nova Friburgo City Council. Cornered, Ibrahim made one last attempt to attack the patrol with a machete, but ended up being shot by Bope's deputy commander, Captain Fernando Principe Martins, who fired five shots. Despite being wounded, Ibrahim managed to escape into the woods, where he was found dead two hours later. Ibrahim's behavior was extremely primitive, describes Storiano. He ran like a wild creature, moving around on his upper and lower limbs. When news of Ibrahim's death spread in Nova Friburgo, the population reacted with a mixture of relief and indignation, resulting in a rush towards the Forensic Medical Institute IML. To avoid possible riots, the authorities transferred Ibrahim's body to the neighboring city of Itaburai. A few days later, Ibrahim's body was buried as an indigent in a local cemetery. Enrique, fearing that he would be killed by the police or lynched by the public, remained on the run for several months. According to records from the time, he presented himself to the prosecutor in charge of the case, Elizabeth Carnero de Lima, on June 17, 1996, claiming his innocence. In a very weak state, Enrique told the prosecutor that he survived in the countryside, feeding on corn, bananas, tomatoes and other food he found on farms and crops he looted. On September 1, 2000, Enrique was sentenced to 34 years in prison by a popular jury. Enrique was free for about six years, but ended up getting involved with drug dealers, says Prado. When he got out, he tried to enter the prison with drugs and was arrested again. He received a seven-year sentence and is currently serving time in Marika. The boat members themselves believed that the youths were possessed by the devil or that their father had a pact with the devil, says Prado. For this reason, they claimed that they possessed supernatural powers, such as the ability to turn invisible. One day, they would appear in one place, and less than 24 hours later, they would appear at a distance of around 40 kilometers. The cruel acts of the Necrophiliac Brothers inspired national cinema, where the story is revived in the 2019 film Macabro.